One of the main mitzvot mentioned in this week's parsha is the mitzvah of giving tzedakah, the mitzvah of, of giving charity. It's a very important mitzvah, very fundamental to the Jewish concept of chesed, of kindness, the manner in which we interact with our fellow, and especially people who are unfortunately not in a good financial position. And yet at the same time, it's probably one of the most difficult mitzvot to many people. After all, there's a sense of entitlement. We did work very hard for the money. And why should somebody else just be the beneficiary of that hard work for naught? First and foremost, it's an important principle to bear in mind that when we are instructed, at least certainly customarily so, to give ma'aser, to give 10% of our income after tax, to give it to tzedakah, it's only really painful and difficult if you believe and you sense that you're giving away your hard-earned money. The Jewish perspective is very different, however. Really, the extra 10% that we receive is not ours and never was ours, but rather we became, for whatever reason, the custodians of the money of the less fortunate. So rather than Hashem actually give the money directly to those who need it, for whatever reason Hashem chose us, and fortunately so, to be those individuals and who are able to be the conduit to that, to that poor person that they should receive their money. And the moment that you start from that particular vantage point, immediately the sting, if you will, is taken out of the concept of giving away 10% because you're not giving away you're simply returning it to its rightful owner. So central is this mitzvah that the Torah spends quite numerous verses about it. And the Torah states as follows, Ki evyon, when there shall be a, an extremely impoverished individual in, in your midst, even worse than just simply poverty. From one of your brothers in your gates, in your cities. In the land which Hashem your God is giving to you. So the Torah says, You shall surely open up your hand to him. And they, we have to give them certainly to what they were accustomed of living. The Torah uses a very strange expression. You would have noted, Open, you shall open. And the interesting thing about that is that normally, whenever we have this kind of a double expression, it's an expression of surety. Certainly, kifatoach tiftach, certainly you shall open your hand. However, there are, the rabbis provide us with another very insightful comment. And this comment goes back to what I was saying about the difficulty with which sometimes we have the sense that we are parting with our own hard-earned money. And here we have a, a, an obligation, a requirement to recognize that indeed that is not the case, but rather what we are doing is we are parting with money that isn't ours, but more than that. Not only are we parting with money that never was ours, we're parting with money that anyhow we are going to be parted from. We all know that in 120 years when we return on Hashemah, we return our soul to Hashem, you can't take anything with you. There's a story told of a very wealthy individual very well respected within the community, very generous person, but really a, a very wealthy man. And he left an instruction to the Hever Kaddish on his dying bed, and he said, the one thing he requests is that he should be buried together with his socks. Strange request, I'm sure we all agree. We all know that there's a commonality of burial. And when a person gets buried, regardless on their standing in life, their stature, it's always the same. The same tachrichim, the same simple shrouds, the same simple coffin in where coffins are used. No difference to how wealthy the person was or not. And here, you had a person who was a tremendous supporter of the community, a very highly respected individual. And he had left one single request, and that is, apart from the regular shrouds, he just wanted to be buried with his socks. They brought this question to the rabbi. And the rabbi heard the question and without much thinking even, turned around and he said, you know, we make no difference in burial. 
And even though indeed he was a person who was very considerate for the community, who was helped immeasurably, nonetheless, we cannot change the custom and the rules of the community even for such an individual. And therefore he said, I'm sorry, but even though it was the final request of a dying individual, we cannot accede to that request. And he was buried like everybody else. But it came to the time to the reading of his will and his family were gathered round. He had an opening remark and he said as follows. He says, at this point in time, I am certain that I have been buried in accordance with Jewish tradition. And in accordance with that tradition, I was buried with the simple same, same shroud that everybody has. I made a simple request that my socks I should be able to wear when I go to the world to come. And I have no doubt, given the rabbi's integrity, that the rabbi did not accede to that request. And I did this to teach you, my children, that as wonderful and it, as having all that money is, never forget, you can't even take your socks with you. And that was why he requested it, not because he wanted to be buried in his socks, but he wanted to teach his children, those who were going to be the heirs to his tremendous estate, not to become so consumed with the money that they're going to hoard it and keep it so that they can take it where you can't even take your socks with you. And this is really what the Torah is saying. It's a very interesting thing. If you've ever seen a really newly born baby, the baby sits there at all times with the hands very tightly clenched. A person is born and they think that we're going to hold on to everything. Whatever we amass, whatever wealth we're going to attain, however much I'm going to earn, I'm not going to give tzedakah, I'm not going to help out the communal institutions, I'm not going to help out the needy within the community. And if I do, it's going to be a very nominal amount of help that I'm going to provide because I'm like a baby. I need to hold on to this material wealth. Torah says, I want you to be aware, I guarantee you that the day will come when you will open your hand and you can't hold on to it anymore and you cannot take it with you. So don't be like a child, says the Torah, and think that everything in this world you have to hold on to, that all the wealth you have to keep for yourself because the day will indeed come and even the socks we cannot take. Kifatoach, Tiftach, we will certainly be in a position where we will have to extend our hands and open it up and release our hold on those very tenuous material possessions. But the one thing you can take with you, the one thing you can take with you is the reward for the mitzvah that was performed. When you indeed perform the mitzvah of giving tzedakah that money, that money stays with you in this world and indeed in the world to come. So let's not be like little infants. Let's realize that the greatest gift that we have is the opportunity to give. And please God, may we all be able to be givers and never have to be takers. Good Shabbos.